Hello, you multi metallical Megatithian Motorheadians. I think I've got that wrong, but the show goes on and continues with a mock mention thank you to Jonathan Mosbach. Uh, 2921. Is that 3921? Oh my goodness. I do write in a fountain pen, you see. And every now and again, I'm not making excuses. I'm just telling you, I spill a wee drop of whiskey or water or a wee drop off the spoon. And because I've written in a fountain pen using fountain pen ink, it goes a little bit blotty right here. But it's a malt mansion. It's an authentic malt mansion. And this is a malt moment in the Bothy, somewhere in the Irish Sea. And it's called... Ralphie Review 1003 Extras. Uh, and here it is, the thing about Irish pot still whiskey. Here we go. Now, I've just reviewed an Irish pot still whiskey. I'm enjoying it. I gave it a nice, decent mark, 82 out of 100. In the old days, I would have given it 85 or 86. But I'm bringing the marks down a little bit to encourage more distilleries around the world to deliver full authenticity spirits because that's what we want to buy and sure we'll pay a bit of a premium for it distillers but please don't bottle crap for us please don't do it because we just won't buy it and people will walk into the bottle specialist retail shop and they'll look at the shelves and they're going to ask themselves which are the bottles with the most dust sitting on the neck and then they'll know, because it's been a conversation in Reddit and Facebook forums, that that's not the whiskey to buy. Because nobody wants to buy it for a reason. Because it's probably 40% heavily chill filtered and um, loaded with ca caramel colourant. I think there is a drop of caramel colourant in this Blue Spot 7 year old cast strength whiskey. I do think so. Uh, I do believe that it is chill filtered, but not much because this is a triple distilled whiskey. And when you put barley spirit through a still three times instead of two, the end result is simply clearer because it's been a more elongated process. There's more opportunity for reflux because you're using triple distillation instead of dust double distillation but I think that for anybody producing traditional Irish pot still whiskey you really want to make sure that you deliver the full signature and character of one of the world's most fascinating and engaging characteristic characteristic charismatic flavours that can be found in a bottle and it's Irish traditional pot still. I in the past have called it pure pot still and I'm going to tell you why because I think it's generally pure brilliant, pure wonderful and pure great to buy a bottle but I have been reminded by Irish whisky fans who know a lot more about Irish whisky than I do that in fact pure is not a term. It's traditional or simply Irish pot still. So I'm just reminding you of that even though I have mentioned it before in a previous video. Now in this video I'm really just going to talk about my views on Irish pot still whisky. Um, And let's start with the basics here. You probably already know, but there's no charm in just reminding ourselves that in Scotland, single malt whiskey is made with 100% malted barley. Now, malted barley is barley which has come from the grain having been sprouted. It's called the malting process. So the grain is laid out on a floor or put into an industrial drum like a massive big tumble dryer and it's allowed to germinate. When the grain germinates all the energy locked up in starch within the grain converts into sugar to provide the energy to allow the grain to sprout its first shoot. 
because the simple reason is the grain has no roots developed yet to take nutrient and energies out of the soil itself. Therefore, at the beginning of its life, all growth, all energy, all development must come from reserves within this, the individual seed of the barley. Now, with Scotch whisky, it's a hundred percent malted, so all the green, green all the, the the grain is sprouted. That sprout sprouting is then stopped when maximum sugar has been achieved within the grain, and then it is kilned to kill off the actual grain and preserve the sugar in it. And when it is put into um, into the sparging process, what you have is this sweet, creamy, grainy, barley um, wort, that's what it's called, which is the liquid you get before fermenting it to create wash, which is basically low barley beer. The Irish, historically, did things a little bit differently for a very practical reason and it goes back to Napoleonic times when the Bank of England was reorganised and became a tax raising vehicle to pay for the Napoleonic Wars because all wars need to be paid for and it is taxes that pay for the wars and that is the way it is just so as we understand. The result was that certain essential items were more heavily taxed than others. So there wouldn't be much tax on claret, for example, which was only drunk by the landed gentry because you want to keep the landed gentry sweet and make sure they're not paying too much in the way of taxes. So nothing's changed there then. But for the peasants and the riffraff and the masses, certain items were heavily taxed Salt was heavily taxed, and so was lace, which was the go-to staple luxury of that particular time and age. And the other commodity which was taxed heavily was barley, malted barley, because it was used for making beer, and beer in these days of old was an absolute essential staple commodity drunk by everyone because it was a good way of guaranteeing that you weren't going to get dysentery and other intestinal diseases from contaminated water because all water that's used for making beer is boiled and then after being cooled it is fermented and the yeasts kill off bacteria and the boiling kills off bacteria and therefore your pint of your foaming flagon of ale made from malted barley at the end of the day when it's put on the table in front of you is something that's safe to drink and even better in an age and a time when there were very few narcotics choices available you know we're spoiled for choice these days aren't we just uh, but in those days it was tobacco and alcohol and that was the end of it and if you were really wealthy, you could have a few cups of tea during the day. <laughs> oh, the good old days. Now, the Irish had to pay even more tax than they did in the UK. Because, of course, that tax had to be transported across the Irish Sea to the big fat chest in the Bank of England, where they stored all the cash and the taxes and all the rest of it. And... Um, they were paying extra tax and they had to use their imagination to circumnavigate this. So they came up with a whole new concept and it went like this. We're being taxed on malted barley used for making beer, but we are not taxed on unmalted barley. It's got to be malted first. But if you used unmalted barley along with malted barley for making beer, you get bitter beer. You get very grain heavy beer that people don't want to drink. But as one of Europe's leading whiskey makers, because Ireland has historically been a massive whiskey producing country, 
simply because they had the the barley bread basket of Europe. I mean, it's the Ireland is called the Emerald Island not because it has emeralds in it. You'll find emeralds in Peru. That's where you find them, and in Namibia and in South Africa. The Emerald Isle is named after the greenness of the landscape. Very fertile, a lot of it's low-lying, highly productive and gets regular rainfall for most of the year. It's a very wet country. It's very lush and green and agriculturally productive. As a result of which, they had plenty of surplus barley after they made the beer, after they made the bread, after they'd fed all their cattle and their other livestock, they had leftover barley from making whiskey, which is what they did. But that heavy tax, you see, bit of a burden, so they incorporated, as an experiment, a proportion of unmalted barley in with the malted barley, which cut down their taxation level. But the thing is, if you just double distilled it, you'd basically get an underwhelming greenish barley new make spirit. But when you triple distilled it, you got a different result. Traditionally, Irish sink, traditional pot still whiskey is triple distilled because the additional heating process helps to break down the starches in the unmalted barley and release a few of the, more, basically release more flavour and some sugars that contribute towards fermentation. It's a fascinating style of whisky. Ireland most definitely owns it, but it depends what Ireland does with it. Things aren't made easy for Irish distillers. There's a huge amount of production bureaucracy and red tape in Ireland um, for a number of reasons, and I'm not going to segue into that. <coughs> but the result is that there's a lot of Irish distillers really need to find their signature, find their identity, find their specific flavour that other Irish distillers don't really create. And this is where they're playing around with <coughs> creating Irish whisky, which is traditional pot still, but with a twist. So it can be traditional pot still with the addition of oats and oats give a delightful creaminess to whiskey but you can't add too many otherwise your wash turns into watery porridge and another thing that Irish distillers can do which I've not seen yet but is going to happen and this is why I'm mentioning in passing because I can see I can see the writing in the wall for this they're going to say we're not bound and we're not legally obliged to stick to oak wood for maturing our whiskey. Therefore, we are going to get in some nice Northern European conifer tree inner staves, spruce, fir, and we are going to see what the greenness of conifer wood does to lift and enhance the greenness of our traditional Irish pot still whiskey and I tell you what you Irish distillers you go for it you go for it um, I feel for you because the bureaucracy you've got to navigate uh, really shouldn't be there it's getting in your way but it is what it is we just have to get on with it but I really look forward in a few years time to be, being in a position to buy at a realistic price not a grossly inflated price, by the way. At a realistic price, some 46% unchill filtered, natural colour, authentic, Irish traditional pot still whiskey. And just bring it, bring it to you and talk about it in another review. I really look forward to that moment in time because at the moment, Middleton Distillery in the south of Ireland, owned by Perno Ricard, dominate the scene and as time goes on, they're delivering the quantity, but I think less so the quality.
that they used to deliver when demand was less. That, mop mates, is just my little teeny tiny winsy winesy personal opinion. So we'll leave it at that. Thank you for watching this video. Hope you found it interesting. This is an interesting whiskey. I recommend it to you, but a little bit fresher, a little bit sharper, a little bit more youthful than it used to be. But give it plenty of water and give it time in the glass and you're going to get a nice sparkling, zesty, sprightly, creamy, green heavy, minty, green, I'm sure I said green, you always, it's funny how now and again we use a colour to try and describe a flavour, but it happens and there's nothing wrong with it. I'm Ralphie, this is the conclusion now of Ralphie Review 1003, thank you for joining me in the Bothy, thank you for watching, and if you haven't subscribed please do, so as you don't miss out. And you never know, you might be fortunate enough, fortunate enough, having subscribed, that you will actually be notified when my next video goes up. Doesn't happen as often as it used to, by the way. I notice what's going on. But there you have it, malt mates. I'm Ralphie, over and out. Where's that Clivey clicker? Oh, here it is. Big red button. If I switch it once, press it once, the camera goes on. If I press it a second time, the camera goes off. I shall now demonstrate.